Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market update for Thursday, June 6, 2019. Uh, so we've now hit my, uh, what, I, what I'm calling my preferred bounce target. That's at key 178 level on QQQ. Uh, let's go over the charts here. We'll start with the daily chart. Uh, back a few weeks ago, you know, after the correction started, and we had the sell signals and uh, we had our first counter trend rally. Actually, before that, I'm back up here. Uh, this is one one board that I shared on the daily QQQ chart. There were really two levels at the time, and they were color coded appropriate. Green meaning if the uh, markets could pop on through there, and uh, we'd probably go on, you know, break out to new highs, and um, from that point. And so again, that was also bounded by uh, 178 down on the bottom, 178 being a pretty significant level. Again, you can see all the reactions back here. I won't go over each and every one, but that uh, pretty important support level. So, you know, we the, the initial correction we hit there and we were able to reverse, go long, cover some things, game that bounce, and uh, it ended right about where it should have. I often say this, the technicals tend to work uh, much better than, uh, you know, slow grinding markets when you have corrections because that's what traders flock to. Fundamentals are changing just too fast for, you know, the Warren Buffets of the world, you know, those guys that use fundamental analysis to process. Um, all these forecasts that were rosy as could be right here just a month or so ago with, you know, economy continuing to chug along and power on through 2019. Um, no rate hikes in sight. All of a sudden, that all changed uh, with a correction. So it said it would. You know, the headlines will change. The market goes down. Uh, you'll have economic revisions go down. Consumer sentiment goes down. Everything else, and it all follows. And odds for a rate hike and everything else. And so, you know, the other day we reached that uh, what I called a crescendo of just bad news. It was really on Monday. I, you know, I, you know, watch the headlines, scan the headlines every day, and. Um, it reached just a point, like I said, I, I think I know over the other word than a crescendo of just bearish headlines uh, one after another, including the, you know, DOJ and FTC coming after Facebook and Google and Microsoft and, and Amazon, all those big things. So that was it. And that marked a uh, near term bottom, gave us a second rally, which was uh, similar to that previous rally back there. And uh, that one ran into resistance, and now so did this one. Um, this is my preferred bounce target. It's not my maximum bounce target. Uh, to tell you what I mean by that is max bounce target is a, a uppermost bounce target uh, where I think a bounce may go and still keep the current trend intact. Like back then, this was a max bounce target. Um, you know, we can certainly go higher from here, but this is my where I prefer and believe that we'll probably reverse. So I spent, I was scrambling. It took over uh, 10 minutes, almost 15 minutes to go over dozens of accounts, you know, long-term accounts, IRAs, 401ks, college saving funds to reverse to a, um, you know, close out <clears throat> a lot of the longs that I'd taken recently. And uh, uh, I was going to, and I, I started to, I had earlier tightened stops up on those, as I said, I would on the site, but I made the decision 178 was hit. A lot of those are ETFs and those type of accounts and, you know, 401ks where you can't actively trade. Uh, so you got to uh, 4 p.m. to get out of there. And so I figured, you know what, just book profits and uh, start going back into the shorts. And that's what I did. So uh, closed out. I uh, believe it was all longs, except I may still have Intel. That's an official trade on the site. By the way, guys, don't get confused. I'll, I'll If you're a member of the site, we've had that Intel long. And uh, if I make any changes to the official trades those go out in a front page post subscribers subscribers you'll get an email right away uh, so we'll hold tight on that for now see what happens tomorrow but uh, as of now we have both day 178 level being hit resistance and uh, that also forms now uh, it, well, it will if we have a reaction tomorrow, it will form a downtrend line. I like to say, uh, and again, this may or may not be in the textbooks, but it's what I consider uh, to make a trend line valid is you have to have at least three reactions. So there's candle number one or reaction number two. Here's reaction number, uh, or I'm sorry, that's number one. Here's reaction number two. It was two different candles, but they were two days apart. So this is really a, a cluster, an area of a reaction. Uh, so one, two. And if we reverse here tomorrow, uh, as I suspect, and then we'll have reaction three, and that'll give us a downtrend line, which, uh, which we may be able to trade off of. Now, 
With that being said, uh, if we do get a reaction, power back up, pop above 178 in the downtrend line, obviously that's near-term bullish. So we'll look at uh, the other other overhead resistance levels here in a second. You know, a lot of signs, If you know, if this is still a bull market with new highs to come, which is still very much a possibility, there's no way you can't, nobody can say definitively that it's not. Um, you know, a lot of things look bearish. You have the PPO curling up here, poised to make a bullish crossover. Uh, there was a bullish crossover right there, big buy signal. Especially when you have clean separation on the PPO lines, you know, stay away from using the PPO line, especially crossovers as buy and sell. And when you're trending in a kind of a low volatility grind and there's not clean separation between the lines. What I like are the clean separations, high and low level crossovers like this one right there. There's a clean separation lines bullish crossover and that was a great buy signal. And that was about, well we had one here and that was good for a 10% plus rally. We had a fairly clean one there, another 10% or so rally and then that one that did the trick all the way to the ties right here. So. I'm going to give you both sides of it. That's my job. You decide what to do. That certainly looks bullish. We don't have the crossover yet. Sometimes you get a rejection as the lines are poised. They look like they're going to cross like right here. Uh, and then you turn back down again. Something to point out. And as I've mentioned quite a bit recently, this is the most oversold the uh, queues have been since back there at the uh, uh, late December lows. So, uh, you know, if you are a believer that the uh, there's a lot more room for this market to run in 2019, uh, I really have, I struggle to find why you wouldn't be very long uh, right here and still long now holding on and riding out any pullbacks. So that may be a possibility and I may have to reverse these trades if um, we continue to move up here. But as of now, uh, I'm favoring and, and leaning towards a, a resumption of the downtrend soon, possibly from these levels. Uh, let's get to the 60 minute charts, get a little more granule here. And uh, there it is, that's that 178 level. These were the targets laid out recently. Uh, we moved up, you know, story was yesterday we hit the 176.74 target, pulled back to the previous uh, resistance level, which is now support, bounced, and then uh, Today we hit that level quite a bit. Uh, we opened up, hit it, pulled back, hit it, hit it, hit it. We were pushing against it. That gave us sort of a, an ascending triangle pattern. And that popped. And again, I'm, I'm going to tell you on face value that that is bullish and it looks bullish. And it, ca it, it catapulted us up to uh, the uh, 178 level, which is where you know, I said we'd go if 176, 74 was taken out. And we hit it almost perfectly right there at 178. In fact, uh, where do we close? Uh, well, we pulled off from there. 178.04 was a high in QQQ. And we closed at 177.62. Uh, you can see it right there. So that's that. Um, now, as I mentioned the other day, uh, I'd have a uh, you know uh, area where I would expect where I expected, and still do uh, the um, this rally to end. Um, gosh, looking at this again. Uh, I may have gone yes I did all the way up here that's that's my maximum uh, preferred you know or maximum upside target I have this level here 186 um, you know we'll just have to tr look at that uh, as the charts come if we happen to power on through here uh, let me just say I, I still think this would be the uppermost bounce target if that 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 uh, preferred scenario that we're going a lot lower in the market if that plays out. But as of now, if we are in the market cycle where I think we are, um, and I've said this before, the nature of a bear market rally is they convince the masses, they convince both the bulls and the bears, the majority that is, that um, that the correction, the worst is over and it's time to get back in, into your longs. And that's what uh, three days of gains will, will do. Uh, another 0.08, you know, eight tenths of a percent gain in QQQ today. Things couldn't be looking any better um, for the bulls and you know that's that's one reason I want to sell and not only that it's it was my plan ahead of time 178 is a big levels I just showed you so enough talking on that let's look at spy comparable levels um, 
We'll see tomorrow. I may be doing this video tomorrow and we may go up. Uh, SPY still has my uppermost bounce target on SPY was, I gotta fix this, I keep talking about 288, 289, it's one penny off, there it is. 289 is my uppermost bounce target. By the way, that would also coincide with this this uppermost level here, 185.95. I really don't want to see, if the markets get there, anything is possible but we're it, it just doesn't really mesh with with the scenario that I'm looking for now so like I said on QQQ I had it a little bit lower that is a possibility and if we hit that and as long as we turn back down that's still a very significant level on QQ in fact uber significant because that level was let me find a, a daily chart and show you that here this one's good enough we'll take off the annotations uh, that level uh, right there, there it is, um, is the, the breakout. Remember on QQQ we had, here I'll turn the lines back on, this line here about 187-ish or so, 180, almost 188. Uh, remember we had a double top high in QQQ followed by the big drop. Then we came up there, tested it, and so that little breakout above that level was a breakout to all-time highs. And that was also, it was and remains a bull trap, a breakout to new highs sucks in a lot of longs new highs on face value all-time highs are bullish because everybody's uh, at, at a, a gain there are no losers nobody's underwater when it, when you're in a position it breaks out to new highs um, except if you're shorting of course but as far as longs go so then when you fail that new high you had all the people that rushed in to buy the new highs um, and uh, that that's bear so again that would be I'll just make it clear that that is my upper uppermost bounce target but I really favor you know that uh, down 182, 83 to about where we are 178 right now, and, and uh, like I said, we have a nice downtrend line there that may come into play and everything else, and uh, that would also be very bearish to see a rejection on the PPO when when it looks like it's poised to tr uh, curl up. Plus, you're coming off oversold readings. If we jog down and hit the oversold uh, reading again, the 30 or lower on the RSI. That's bear market action. You don't you don't see that uh, three tags in close proximity uh, in a bull market. In fact, that's why you know I maintain that this was all bear market action and and this was just a bear market rally. And I know QQQ made new highs, but the rest of the stock market most indexes didn't. They either matched or fell short of their previous highs. So, all right, let's go to spy real quick and we'll look at the futures and wrap this up. Uh, two let's. 286.71. This is a daily chart here, uh, but you can see I have a resistance zone right here. I'll have to turn that level on for you. About 285.18, 285.18.17, and that's what we hit today, that lower line on that resistance zone. I focused more on this 60-minute chart recently. You can see we popped above that 284.16 target. There is a gap right here uh, that was filled today, backfilled. Here, I'll give you that line. Let me draw it this way for you. Uh, a couple gaps actually right at that level as well and so although I didn't have a line in there before it, um, I put a, a heavier weighting on that QQQ 178 because this market has all, it's been about the queues since day one since back in uh, since the bottom in March of 2009 it's all been about those market leading FANG stocks which are the top heavy components of QQQ uh, so either way SPY at the same time QQQ reversed off 178 just before the close SPY reversed off that uh, level there which is the um, that gap resistance about 285.60 or so and uh, PPO's getting pretty stretched high level we're overbought on the 60 minute chart of uh spy right here you can see the uh rsi is at 7250 that's above the over overbought reading of 70 and as i often say overbought in a bull market uh, tends to become more overbought and stay overbought for an extended period of time that's the nature of a, a bull market or a bull trend there's a very overbought reading however during a bear market or bearish trend uh, overbought readings are usually very fleeting they're one and done just like oversold readings are, are very fleeting one and done so the, everything happens in reverse you have persistent oversold readings in a bearish trend and if you get overbought and again this is a big assumption if I'm right and we're going a lot lower this is probably your your uh, a golden shorting op right here it usually is you don't stay overbought very long during a bearish trend so uh, those are the things I'm looking at and let's roll into the futures and we'll wrap this up all right NQ interesting day today in the NQ e-minis uh, let's go zoom in a little tighter here 
these are the levels here. I can't recall. I may have added one on this chart because I'm, I'm using this chart on my trading as well. Uh, 7272 was a, a resistance level and that was hit today. Uh, we had this these small wedges. I guess I didn't cover the yeah, I covered this for members earlier today, but not uh, uh, YouTube subscribers. We have these small wedges that have formed on uh, the NASDAQ 100 and S&P 500 e-mini futures. I need to move my divergence line up here a little bit, but you can see we have negative divergence now in the 60 minute time frame. And we had it this morning. They broke down. We broke from the wedge and we came in and we back tested the wedge. And we had this little spike up to this uh, resistance here. You can see the lines drawn, uh, capturing all these reactions right here, about 72.95. And I added that today uh, since the last update because I was trying to correlate a resistance level with the uh, the 178 level on QQQ that I was showing you. And that's so I that's what I came up with. About 7300, 7295 correlates to um, the 178 level on QQQ and so that's where that's where I reversed my uh, NQ positions from long to short. Uh, there's our divergence. It's not confirmed. Indicators are still heading up and uh, you can see the PPO. Well, this is RSI. I'm just trying to move that line up if I can. Um, PPO is still pointing up. That means the momentum is higher right now and it could continue and it has the potential to take these divergences out. However, they're pretty strong divergences so they can just expand uh, if we go up a little bit more, if we pop it tomorrow or overnight, uh, those divergences will expand. Um, but unless we move up above these previous highs right here, uh, they remain intact. And so that's what NQ looks like. Let's look at ES. ES or the S&P 500 E-mini futures. So, you know, you have the bigger picture or at least intermediate term picture. We're not focused on the weekly charts in this video. There's our downtrend line off the highs forms this price channel. This is more so really a divergence line, but you can also draw a parallel price channel. B bullish divergence, negative, I'm sorry, positive divergence at the lows. That was the catalyst for this rally that was talked about uh, since those divergences started forming right about here. We went lower, the divergences continued to build, and as they most uh, usually do, most often do, they played out for a nice trend reversal, a uh, nice rally in um, the S&P 500 and everything else so far. Uh, and that, as I just showed you with NQ, ES has put in a bearish rising wedge, a small wedge, very steep wedge. We broke down, uh, well, I'll have to zoom in probably for you on the YouTube channel so you can see that a little better. Uh, we broke down this morning and kicked back and we basically back tested the wedge uh, and closed a little bit above that 2840, 75-ish level that I have there, uh, not a lot. Uh, so there's there's certainly the potential to foil these bearish chart patterns. Um, you know, if we move up higher, like I said, take out the divergences, and uh, then if so, the next stop here is 28.64. Uh, so here's the way I look at this. Like I said, I've added shorts. I will continue. I you know took you know went back into starter short positions with with room to add, and I'm going to add on one of two things. So I'll go back to the QQQ chart. Um, I will add on strength if the market continues to run up to, but not beyond. I won't be adding uh, anywhere uh, above this level right here since that's my max bounce target. So if we continue higher like this, I scale in, uh, if it, you know, turn down, great. However, if we just turn down tomorrow, uh, I'll also continue to scale into those positions. And uh, you, we could flounder around for a while. Nothing big uh, should happen until the recent lows are taken out. That's what you want to watch right here. That would be our next major sell signal. And uh, I'll tell you, if we start to move down impulsively tomorrow or early next week, we could hold up tomorrow since it's so Friday and a lot of traders don't want to position heavy before the weekend. Um, but if you start to see very impulsive selling, that's not going to be a good sign. And if you do, and if you're long and bullish, or if you're looking to get short or add to shorts, uh, what my plan is, is if and as each resistance, or I'm sorry, yeah, former resistance levels become support. So as those levels are broken, and I'll have to check the NQ charts and ES and everything else and try to align these levels, you know, it's better when you have 
you know levels align on on spy and qqq but uh that that's how it works so you know a, a pullback to support may just be a buying up so you know in other words i wouldn't i wouldn't add a short position at 175 uh if i have it on a pullback to 175 if i have support at 174.92 makes no sense because that level could hold but you wait till the 175 breaks and you add to it and you scale in uh to your back into a full short position likewise you scale up but you don't dig yourself in a hole um if you have a plan to you know predetermined plan to add to a position and uh, then at that point you're more concerned about scaling out especially or at least I would be especially if that 186 uh, level is taken out on QQQ so that's it um, well let's just see where we go tomorrow and we'll, we'll pick it up from there this has been Randy Finney with the right side of the chart hope you enjoyed it